coming up next on CBS Sports, the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show, sponsored by Pizza Hut, who reminds you that any time's a great time to stop and smell the pizza. Hi, everybody. March Madness is in the air. I'm Jim Nance, along with Bill Raftery, Billy Packer. You ready, guys, to get Let's it started? Let's we'll go. Waste no time. Let's get out to Kansas City. James Brown with the announcement. JB, take it away. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much, and we will waste no time cutting right to the chase for the 64-team field for this year's tournament, and let's start with the number one seeds in the four regions. <laughs> Up next, who goes to the dance? We'll show you who's invited and whose wishes are unrequited. Number one, North Carolina gets a loud warning. Some teams enter with a heap and helping of confidence, while others try to help themselves at the final hour. Bobby Hurley gets in the proper mindset for the Sunday conversation. If you go 6 0, you're the national champion. And that's all I think about is six wins. Think about this, the Bulls trying to dance past the Pistons in Detroit. Our spring training preview drops in on a team with two left feet. On the links, it was a couple's dance in Fort Lauderdale. Sports Center shakes down the tournament field. Put on your party hats, but not until we give the signal. Okay, now. And welcome to the big show. I'm Keith Olbermann. This is my tag team colleague, Jack Edwards. <laughs> 64 teams have been tagged and ticketed for various destinations around the country. The NCAA has chosen the field and the pairings. And it would be dramatic to say that the complete picture of March Madness rested on the outcome of the ACC final between Georgia Tech and number one North Carolina. It would be compelling to say that Carolina's hopes of a number one seed rested on beating the Yellow Jackets. To say that would be dramatic, compelling, and a complete lie. At Charlotte, good evening, Mr. Phelps. The injured Derek watching his replacement at the point. Henry Hall was going to Pat Sullivan, Carolina by seven. But the heels couldn't see the forest through the trees. James Forrest of Georgia Tech. And look at him on Kevin Salvadori, educating and excavating. Tech by four at halftime. After the break, Brian Reese muscling up, misses the tray, comes in, gets his own miss. An 11-0 run for Dean and company. But it was the sophomore Forrest on the way to 27. Huge points, strong with the left hand. Then inside the minute mark, Yellow Jackets going for the upset. They lead by five, and it's Reese from way downtown. Bang! Tech gets a free throw. The lead is three again. Reese from way downtown to tie. Blank. Tech upsets the heels 77-75. Forrest adds 10 rebounds to grab the tournament MVP award, and the Yellow Jackets shock the nation's number one team, and it makes all the difference in the NCAA tournament. Well, no, not really. Carolina not only holds the top seed in the East, but they open 90 minutes from their own campus against East Carolina, the only team in the tournament that has a losing record. The other openers at Winston-Salem, URI and Purdue, St. John's and Texas Tech, the 5-12 matchup, and Arkansas and the Crusaders. In the bottom half of the East, they open Friday at Syracuse with Virginia against Manhattan, UMass and Ivy League champ Penn, New Mexico State and Nebraska, and the second seed in the East, the 24-4 Bearcats of Cincy against Coppin State, which has won 16 straight. Well, they had won 16 straight. The SEC Championship at Lexington. Rick Pitino suggesting his kids go outside against LSU. Jeff Pressel responding. And again from way downtown. Bang. And from Travis, don't call me today's best. Bang. Dale Brown thought the Wildcats would be in trouble without their starting setter, Rodney Dent. But KY simply went deep. Travis Ford, six of them. Might as well have been calling it a touchdown. Travis eventually left doing his Michael Jordan impression. Even Jamal Mashburn hit one against LSU. And the Wildcats win by 333 billion, 333 million, 333,333. Even with Dent denied, or dented indeed, the Wildcats got a lot out of the pivot. Soft Andre Riddick, 15 points, 10 boards, 9 blocks, stunning the LSU center, Gert Hammock. The Wildcats' is cinch is the top seed in the southeast. Here's the top half of that bracket, which opens in Nashville Friday. 
They go against Derek Suber and those last second guys from Brider of the Purple Sage. Utah and Pitt face off eight and nine. Wake Forest and Tennessee Shat, and then Iowa and Northeast Louisiana finish out that part of it. In the bottom half of the scaffolding, finals of the Big East lead to this decision. Syracuse saw Terry DeHair today gone tomorrow. The Pirates winners of a 10 in a row made the Orange Men dizzy at Madison Square Garden from the deity cam. The payoff to DeHair. And when the 2-3 zone forced the buck goes outside, DeHair drew them out of it. 51-37 the hall at the half. Syracuse with a sign of life after the break. Lawrence Moten to Mike Hopkins. Beautiful move. And the Pirates lead is still 11. Seton Hall on the way to the biggest margin of victory in the history of the Big East final. Arturis Karshinovas. And as Jerry Walker knocks the Orangemen over like paper mache bowling pins, it's Seton Hall 103, Syracuse 70. Your tournament MVP is DeHair. 17 points. Either that or he was just trying to put that on his head. Karnishevas had 20, 10 boards. Walker 19. Once Seton Hall drew the box out of the zone, as Jim Beheim said, we can't beat them one time in 100 playing man-to-man. -man. So the Hall goes to Orlando, home of Shaq in the bottom half of the Southeast bracket. They draw Tennessee State, Ohio Valley champs, after four years in a row of having lost 20 games. The rest of this bracket is from the top Big 8 tournament runner-up, K-State versus Tulane. Florida State and Evansville's Aces and Western Kentucky against Anthony Hardaway and Memphis State. Jack? Keith, the Big Ten avoids ridicule and embarrassment by not holding a conference tournament. Instead, it regularly rolls out half a dozen teams which make the NCAA field. Indiana was at Wisconsin Great to finish its season, hoping to ridicule and embarrass the Badgers to lock up a top seed in a region. In Madison, this may be news, but Bob Knight was trying to dispense a little bit of his opinion to the officials. Chris Reynolds whips it inside. Greg Graham lays it in. Todd Leary to Graham. To Leary, and he's got the three, 22 in the first half. Uh, the 22-point lead for Indiana in the first half. In the second, Andy Kilbride bombs, 23 for him, and the Badgers come back. Michael Finley goes baseline, and Wisconsin's within six. Graham runs the floor, though, finds Calvert Cheney, and it is a seven-point win for Indiana. Greg Graham scores 27. Calvert Cheney, 22. Indiana finishes 17-1 and one in the Big Ten. Bob Knight's teams did better only in 1975 and 76. Both times they went 18-0. and 0. Indiana gets the top seed in the Midwest and will open against Mid-Continent Conference champ Wright State, which is 20-9 and 9 on the year. New Orleans will go against Xavier for starters. Oklahoma State and Marquette will meet in the first round. Metro Tramp uh, champ Louisville. Uh -oh. What would Dr. Freud say about that? Lines up against the Blue Hens of Delaware. Cal's fast finish gets the Bears a number six seed to play LSU in the first round. Two-time defending champion Duke opens with Southern Illinois. BYU and SMU initially face one another. Kansas is a two seed, getting pesky ball state right away. Among the teams having to sweat out the draw, George Washington. They waited to see their school's name come up. Did they make it? Well, you take a look a little farther than halfway down, and you see GW's first round foe, New Mexico. Up top, it's Michigan migrating west, getting the top seed to open against Coastal Carolina. Iowa State and UCLA also head for Tucson. Georgia Tech takes on SWAC champ Southern in the first round. In the Big 8 championship, Missouri and Kansas State fight for Cinderella's slipper. Off the missed three, Lamont. Frazier puts it down. Missouri takes the early lead. Anthony Bean for three for K-State. Anthony Bean for three for K-State. Game's tied at 26. Closing ticks of the clock in the first half. Where are you going with that ESPN yeah. table? Wow. Reggie Smith at the other end lays it up and in, and there's a larceny arrest at halftime. Norm Stewart's club up by two at the break. Tigers in the second half. Mark Atkins downtown. Missouri up by seven. Kansas State comes back. He's not a hockey player, he's a skier. Jones with a three, and they're within two. But Javon Crudup puts it in, auditioning for the Little Caesars ad, perhaps. Pizza, pizza, and they win by 12. Uh, so Missouri goes to the NCAA tournament in spite of having lost seven of its last eight regular season games. The Tigers beat Oklahoma State, then Iowa State, and finished off Kansas State to get their ticket to the NCAA tournament. In the Big West Championship, Long Beach State against New Mexico State, Terrence O'Keefe. Beach State win may have put the squeeze on a Big West rival, which uh, expected to get in. Keith will have that story in a second. So uh, here's the rest of the West. Long Beach State starts with Illinois. Vandy sees Boise State first. Temple meets Missouri in the opening round. 
Arizona has to settle for a second seed and a date with Santa Clara in the round of 64. Keith? By Monday evening at the latest, they will not only be out of the tournament, they'll also be out of the ratings. But at the moment, the NCAA Selection Committee snubbed a top 20 rated team, Vegas. Last week, Raleigh Massimino said there would be eight or nine bubble teams that did not make it. He was right. Besides the 21 and 7 Rebs, other teams snubbed and in a snit, or make that snubbed and in a nit, NIT. Houston, the surging Providence Friars, the Sooners, Gophers, and JMU. As to the reactions in Oklahoma and Minnesota, well, at least they didn't point out that the chairman of the selection committee, Tom Butters, was only two and three as a pitcher for the Pirates in the 60s. I think the thing that's really tough is the fact that we played a strong schedule. Uh, even to this day, we have the second strongest schedule in the Big 8 Conference. We have 19 wins, which is not, pretty, uh, not very bad, and yet we're going to be sitting at home. Oh, it really hurts. It really hurts because, you know, I, I just felt like we played well enough and we were very deserving. And uh, I don't feel like a 6-4 better team than the Minnesota Golden Gophers, but uh, the committee felt otherwise. Clem and Jerry will soon be appearing in an NIT near you. Later in the big show, the full rundown on that tournament, including Wednesday's opening triple header here on ESPN. Plus more later about the NCAA. Who is in, who isn't, who should have been, and who shouldn't have been. Jack? The NBA now. The team is still strong, but the weakening flag. Who are you going to ask to figure it all out? How about John Saunders and Dick Vitale? Thanks a lot, Keith. I think when you look at which region is the easiest, it looks like Dean Smith does have a little smooth sailing into New Orleans. I think so, John. I look at the East. To me, the East seems like the easiest route of all. And North Carolina, if they get a healthy Derek Phelps, should be able to move on. When we look at that region right there, Carolina, the top seed, opens up with East Carolina. And that should certainly be an easy W for them. The next round, they get the winner of Rhode Island and Purdue. But then you look down, Cincinnati. I don't believe this Cincinnati team is as loaded as they were last year. Certainly a very good basketball team, but not a team that I believe can go on and go to the big, big dance in terms of the Final Four. Cincinnati and UMass, a couple of teams that had Cinderella years last year. If you look at which region is the toughest, you have to go to the Midwest because out there you've got Indiana, you have Kansas, and Duke. I think it's absolutely loaded. I mean, you look out there and you talk about some Hoosiers out there. The question now is, will they get a healthy Allen Henderson? Even in Oklahoma State at five, look at Louisville at four can create problems. Kansas and Duke ultimately can play with the winner probably hooking up with the Hoosiers. What a matchup that would be, but the, I still like Duke coming out of there. Well, without Allen Henderson, it's going to be tough for Indiana. I really believe that. I think they have to have a healthy Mr. Henderson, and I don't think they will have that in terms of his mobility and agility. Great shot blocker and his presence. Had they had Allen Henderson in terms of being really healthy, I would pick the Hoosiers to win the whole thing. Deja vu. Last time they were a number one seed was in 1987, and we remember what happened then. They cut the nets down and beat Syracuse on that acrobatic J by Mr. Keith Smart. Yeah, Jim Beheim certainly remembers what happened back in 87 that was also in New Orleans now teams that are not in the field of 64 there are a number with legitimate beefs UNLV a national ranked team all season long Houston Oklahoma Minnesota and who was hotter than Providence at the end of the year in the Big East Providence wins seven of their last eight games certainly were hot early in the year they beat Arizona they struggled out of the gate they were one in six in the conference but made a great recovery certainly they right now have a legitimate gripe Oklahoma, well, we heard Tom Butter say, so, well, they didn't really beat a lot of good people. So they do analyze that, that schedule. So it's important for teams to really play against super people if they want to get that so-called high RPI rating. All right, your final four, the group that's going to be in New Orleans with the chance to, as you say, cut down the nets. You guys don't waste any time. <laughs> Already you want to put guys on the spot, final four. Well, I like North Carolina coming out of the east. I like Kentucky out of the southeast. I like Duke out of the Midwest. I love the 3-H gang, Hurley, Hill, and Hill. And I love the athletes of Michigan, Weber, and Jalen Rose. All right, a few years back, a team by the name of Austin P beat Illinois, and you wound up standing on your head. Who's the standing on your head game this year? Who could knock somebody off in the first round? Well, I think in the first round, you could talk about watch out for Texas Tech against St. John's. I know Brian Mahoney did a great job with the Red. Yeah, you know, just take it one game at a time. At the bottom of the hour, it's the tournament special. John Saunders and Bill Raftery are in the studio to examine and analyze the field. Sports Center's back in a flash.
Can the Devils gear it up for one more run? Carolina's got the talent, but can Dean's boys win it again in New Orleans? East Carolina? Who are these guys? Can Chris Mills put Zona in the Final Four zone? Will the Monster Mash go out with a bang? You gotta love the upsets. But Cinderella's gonna do it this year. Can the Big East step it up for the big dance? Will March Madness be a nightmare for the rest of the field? Who's gonna give us the great moments this year? Hey, I'll be at the big dance, baby. Let's find out who else will be dancing on Bourbon Street. Stay tuned for the tournament selection special. ESPN's NCAA Tournament Special. John Saunders along with... No, it's not Dick Vitale. Plus the <laughs> Dick Vitale is not with me. Bill Raftery is. We're glad to have you here because it's been a wacky year already. Mm -hmm. We haven't even started playing. There's a lot of teams complaining they should have been in there. At the head of the list is Vegas. They're ranked number 25 in the nation in the poll that just came out today. They're not in. That's the first time that's happened since 1979 mm -hmm. that a ranked team didn't get in. That was Purdue. Well, the macaroni won't taste as good for Roley, unfortunately. But you think of this East and Midwest that uh, we're going to discuss tonight, and you think an orthopedist may be deciding yeah. who's going to win the tournament. you got the problem with Alan Henderson, Grant Hill, and Derek Phelps. So hopefully they'll be healthy and help their teams for the run. Yeah, injuries certainly abound. So let us start the special by looking at the East, where the number one seed, the North Carolina Tar Heels, they will face East Carolina, the champions out of the Colonial Athletic Association. Rhode Island from the Atlantic. 10 taking on Purdue from the Big Ten. That's the 8-9 game. And Bill, when you look at Rhode Island, you think back to the run that they had in 1988. It was a miracle year. Oh, Owens and Garrick, two great guards and good fast-breaking team. And Tommy Penders redid his hair, had a tan. It was a different look, but a, an opportunity for Skinner and company. Three versus 11. Against Syracuse, and they knocked them off. You see this game was being played on the floor of the Tar Heels. And Syracuse out of the Big East, the mighty Big East at the time, was shocked and surprised by a team that would go on to the Sweet 16 with Rhode Island, upsetting a couple of teams along the way. But this time, they are an eight seed going against a nine. Purdue out of the Big Ten, it wouldn't be as much of a shock with a victory there. But when you look at those first two games, North Carolina, you talk about their point guard injury. Mm -hmm. That is a key because you saw without Phelps what happened in the ACC tournament. Well, you know what's amazing? And it is tough without him. And they'll need him back and they'll need him healthy. It's a passing concept, so they don't have the penetrator that they, a lot of clubs look for. So I think it's important that they get a lot out of their defense if he's not back. But with him back, he's a stopper. And they've got to contain guys like Travis. Best if you're going to win it all. What's important for East Carolina? coming? Well, East Carolina, enjoy the party. I mean, it looks <laughs> like they've been regaling the last couple of days. Yeah, they certainly did have some fun. All right. Let's look down the rest of that bracket. Games being played in Winston-Salem at the Lawrence Joel Coliseum, which is the home floor of Wake Forest. St. John's, the number five seed out of the Big East, taking on Texas Tech. Texas Tech, a very small squad. St. John's extremely physical. Now, you you think Texas Tech, though. I mean, you sit here in this studio. You have that advantage of seeing these clubs all year long. St. John's has the ability with the inside strength to push people. I remember John Thompson saying when they played uh, St. John's, they push you out from the box area. It's a good defensive team. They might be too strong. Yeah, Arkansas will play Holy Cross, Holy Cross of the Patriot. Now, Arkansas, I'm not saying that this is a team that will beat North Carolina, but this is the type of team yeah. that if one does give them problems, this would be the type of team. Speed, and, and when you think of them in the pressing and the activity, and, and what comes to mind is Florida State, that kind of atmosphere. Sometimes it's tough for Dean Smith, but they're awfully good this year. A lot of people don't respect them. I think they'll be there late. All right, stay with us. We will continue with more of our tournament special in just a moment. We'll continue to look down the rest of the East, and we'll also have the Midwest. That one's coming up, and we'll hear from Jeff Jones of Virginia. His squad made it to the field of 64. What?
<laughs> All right, now we're going to get to see who you like in the East final to make it there. Well, you know, when you look at this club, uh, North Carolina, not too bad, right? And I think Cincy. Okay. Cincy is a solid team. I think defensively, you've got two teams with the ability to disrupt. And uh, folks, don't go out on a limb with my choices. I haven't been right in many a year. Just ask the alumni at Seton Hall. <laughs> the number one and the number two seed. I so like to really extend myself. I was going to say, not looking for any upsets in the East. We'll continue with more of this NC. AA tournament special in just a moment. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Midwest where Indiana is the number one seed and Alan Henderson, you see the brace on the right knee. The question is, will he be able to play? And if he cannot, how far can Indiana go without him? along now and go to the Rosemont Horizon where the Midwest Regional will also be played and in this California against LSU an interesting first round matchup Duke will face Southern Illinois but California and LSU interesting because of LSU's great run in the SEC tournament as we take a look at how well they did in this one it was a squad that was on the bubble and their coach Dale Brown was politicking as usual but he did most of his politicking on the floor and he got Jimmy Valvano's favorite name Gert Hammock <laughs> the basketball when needed it's amazing when he's an underdog you just don't question his ability it means they come up with the freak defenses and they make adjustments they're very tough when you don't think they're going to be particularly good. And the team will face California. Tremendous run at the end of the year. I mean, Lou Campanelli, we all hated mm -hmm. to see him go. Oh, we yeah. hated the way that was handled. But you have to give Todd Bozeman the credit. Nine and one since he took over that team. And he's done it with style, too. I mean, he's just gone and coached. He took the job because he wanted to. He had recruited the kids and wanted to identify. Couldn't leave them. But it's amazing what's transpired here. And when you have they, uh, Lamont Murray, they feel is the, the, the sophomore, best sophomore yeah. in the conference. Jason Kidd, the best freshman. Henrik, and this is a good basketball team, and they're maturing. And Jason Kidd, you mentioned him, one of the guys that Bozeman recruited. Mm -hmm. What a matchup that would be if it was Kidd against Hurley in the next round. <laughs> well, you don't like this but maybe this will be the new kid on the block at the point position uh, he has found people he's got a little electricity speaking of mr. Hurley in the open floor with some magic of his own the sleight of hand and I think God endows certain people and both of us weren't in the correct line when it came to finding people with passes, but those two could do it. <laughs> Certainly not in that line. But, Duke, when you talk about them, the question mark is Grant Hill and the toe injury. Well, it, it's, it's a funny thing. I think missing those two games might be a blessing. Nobody likes to lose, but they are a team for March. And Mike Krzyzewski has gotten them ready each year defensively they get better they take you out of what you like to do there's a talent level there and he just embraces Bobby Hurley great extension between the coach and the bench Mike Krzyzewski might have a problem having to play in Chicago what do you think <laughs> well the hardest thing for him I think <laughs> in the tournament being in Chicago is to get tickets for his buddies you know uh, he's, he's got quite a following there all right let's take a look at the rest of the bracket at the Rosemont Horizon be and I think they will be Roy Williams will not stand for it I think they'll be concerned with detail. All right, let's take a look at your picks for the final well, two once, teams. Uh, people, I just can't wait for this. Uh, I'm going out on the limb once again with <laughs> Indiana and Duke. Number one and number three. You well, don't disagree. I mean, well, <laughs> you knocked out the number two seed, so I'm going to give okay, you the nod okay. that you're going out on a limb going for the two-time national champion. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, we'll be back with more in just a moment. But first, a reminder, we will be here throughout the tournament, Thursday and Friday, special at 5 up now they've got the ability to shoot on the perimeter they got an inside game with both walker and lou luther wright developing in such fine fashion i think clinician this doesn't get enough enough publicity who do you like in the southeast i like to go out there and <laughs> dangle a little bit in the wildcat at seton hall i think terrific basketball team coming alive and of course mashburn and company my choices. When you go to the Kentucky Derby, you I can have the best big, seat in the house. You can only huh? win a quarter on your two dollar bet. All right, here's a look at who Seton Hall has lost to in their last four tournament appearances. Each of them has gone to the final four. Twice a champion in '89. Seton Hall lost the championship game on Ramil Robinson's free throws. Meanwhile, we will have more in a moment. We'll take a look at the Fab Five trying to make their second consecutive trip to the final four. Look, all Fords are made the same, but Klonger Fords...
LSU in the SEC tournament will face the champions from the big sky. So your picks in the West. Well, there they are, kid. Going out on the limb. Now, I vacillated. I've changed my mind a few times, but I think Georgia Tech is hot. I think uh, Michigan is going to have to be conscious of every game. They can't relax. And I think sometimes they have a tendency to forget what the job at hand happens to be. But this is a great starting team for Georgia Tech. All right, I like that. The number two and the number four seed. He's really stretching. That's good. You might get 350 on those picks. <laughs> All right, we'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. But first, a reminder, the NIT gets under.